Now, from CBS News Miami, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFede. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFede, and today we are looking at two major investigations that I recently conducted. Later in the show, I will talk to you about my new hour-long documentary called Warehoused, The Life and Death of Tristan Murphy, that will premiere next week. On one level, it is a story about how people with mental illnesses are treated in the criminal justice system, but it is also the story of a mother looking for answers in her son's death. But we start today with a story about an outside conservative group who you probably have never heard of, called the Freedom Foundation, and their efforts to rewrite laws in Florida, which critics argue are designed to weaken the rights of working people, and how the conservative think tank is specifically targeting the teachers union here in Miami. For the past several months, public school teachers across South Florida have received these mail pieces, urging them to stop paying their union dues to the United Teachers of Dade. Those flyers were then followed by this video released online earlier this month. We're here in Miami-Dade right now talking to all these teachers who are really interested in decertifying their union because for decades now they've been represented by United Teachers of Dade, which has just failed in representing them properly. The flyers in the video come from the Freedom Foundation, a conservative think tank that is financed by wealthy right-wing donors, including the Bradley Foundation, the Sarah Scaife Foundation, and the Charles Koch Foundation. The Freedom Foundation has raised tens of millions of dollars over the years for what they say is a nonpartisan effort to educate workers about their rights. But that critics charge is a well-orchestrated national campaign to weaken and destroy labor unions representing government employees. These aren't isolated state-by-state -state episodes, but rather part of a bigger arc, a bigger campaign to try and defang, defund, and demobilize public sector labor unions, particularly teachers' unions. Alex Hertel Fernandez is a professor at Columbia University specializing in labor unions. A former member of the Labor Department in the Biden administration, he is the author of State Capture, which he says documents the far right's attack on worker rights. The important thing to note about organizations like the Freedom Foundation is that they're part of broader networks. Um, for instance, in this case, the Freedom Foundation is part of the State Policy Network, which is a network of conservative leaning think tanks all across the country that are pushing the same agenda across each state. And this was a really important innovation of conservative donors and organizers. They realized that they could have influence in shaping the national agenda by moving across states in a coordinated fashion. In Florida, the Freedom Foundation has set its sights on the state's largest teachers union, UTD, which represents 30,000 school district employees. In July, the Freedom Foundation held a national summit at this resort near Denver, providing all expense paid trips for several Miami-Dade teachers to attend the conference, where it pitched them on the idea of creating a group to take down UTD. The Freedom Foundation is now financing and promoting that alternative organization called the Miami-Dade Education Coalition. In addition to producing the video touting the new group and paying for the mailers attacking UTD, the Freedom Foundation has also built the group's website and is funding their legal expenses. Rusty Brown is the Southern Director for the Freedom Foundation. How much money has the Freedom Foundation spent so far on their campaign here in Miami-Dade County? I, I don't have that number in front of me. I mean, it's obviously not small. I mean, you can you can do the math on what mailings cost. They're not cheap, but like I said, that's not something I'll shy away from. You know, this is a very going to be a very expensive campaign. Reaching out to thirty thousand people is not cheap any way that you cut it. How much are you dedicating to this campaign against uh, UTD? Whatever it takes. Uh, is more than a million? Are we likely to see a campaign that's going to run into the millions of dollars down here? It's hard to say, but I mean, it, it's. Uh, I hope not, but <laughs> but it, it, yeah, I mean, reaching out to 30,000 people is not a small feat. We are gonna be solely focused on working for the teachers at providing the best classroom conditions, the best local school conditions possible. For the Sean Baytal has been a teacher in Miami-Dade County for 30 years. A longtime critic of UTD, Baytal has run and lost to be president of UTD in the past. He was among the teachers who the Freedom Foundation flew to Denver for the teacher summit 
and is now the spokesperson for the newly formed Miami-Dade Education Coalition. We have a piece of paper that's not called a contract that's really not worth much more than toilet paper. When Miami-Dade Education Coalition succeeds at replacing the United Teachers of Dade, you're going to see your dues drop. Teachers currently pay a little less than $1,000 a year in union dues, which is typical for teachers' unions across the country. But because Florida is a right-to-work state, no teacher has ever been required to pay union dues. They are entirely voluntary. And even if a worker chooses not to pay, they still reap the benefits of the pay raises and other perks the union negotiates. Let's say the Miami-Dade Education Coalition becomes the bargaining unit, wins ultimately through this process and becomes the representative body. What is your dues going to be? I'm, I'm going to say we're looking at probably half of that, around $400 or less. They would be able to cut the dues, Betal said, because the Miami-Dade Education Coalition would no longer contribute money to the American Federation of Teachers or the National Education Association, groups that conservatives have targeted for years by claiming they promote a radical agenda. And cutting the funding for those national teacher unions is exactly what the Freedom Foundation is after. You know, for decades, public sector labor unions have been among the most involved in, in politics of, of different forms of unions because so much of what they, um, the work that they do and the terms of that work are, are set by elected officials. Uh, and as a result, they've been a key foe of conservatives. And that's why you've seen over decades this campaign to weaken public sector labor unions as a political strategy by pursuing all of these different measures, whether it's cutting back on their right to collectively bargain or on their right to be able to collect dues and fees from, um, from workers that they represent. Beto said they would also withdraw from the Florida Education Association, which provides attorneys for union members who need representation in grievances. Beto said they are looking at hiring other law firms to represent teachers. Beto acknowledges the Freedom Foundation may be using Miami-Dade teachers for their own political ends, but he said it is necessary for him to align with them because he was unable to challenge UTD in the past. Do you remember okay. World War II? Do you remember that we allied ourselves with the Soviet Union against Adolf Hitler? The concept is, of, you know, an enemy of my enemy is my friend for today. And right now, we have tried for decades to overthrow this ineffective, fraudulent organization known as United Teachers of Dade, and we have not been able to do it. The current attack on UTD is the latest in a decades-long effort by the right to weaken labor unions. In 2018, a deeply divided Supreme Court issued what is known as the Janus decision, which weakens unions' ability to collect dues. Yes, Freedom Foundation was involved in the Janus, in the Janus decision, yes. That decision opened the door for Republican-controlled legislatures across the country to target public sector unions. In Florida, the Republican legislature passed Senate Bill 256 earlier this year which blocked local governments from deducting union dues from an employee's paycheck, even if the employee wanted the dues collected. Employees would now have to either mail in their union dues or create another mechanism to pay them. It also raised the number of dues-paying members that the union must have to remain in existence from 50% of the workforce to 60%, and they must show proof that it's there by December 15th of this year. Rusty Brown claims that he and the Freedom Foundation wrote Senate Bill 256. You wrote that. You helped write that bill, right? You wrote it? Correct, yes. Why did you write SB 256? So to, to help employees in Florida hold their unions accountable. In Florida, the unions that were exempted from the new rules making it harder to collect dues were the unions representing police officers, sheriff's deputies, and firefighters all unions that endorsed Ron DeSantis in the last election. You measure success by the amount of union dues that unions are no longer collecting. Is that a fair statement? Yes, but it's a narrow view of the problem as a whole. The keynote speaker for the Freedom Foundation Teacher Summit was DeSantis's education secretary, Manny Diaz. He appeared at the Denver Area Summit a week after approving new standards for teaching African-American history in Florida that included a discussion on ways in which some slaves may have benefited from slavery. Fortunately, I work for a governor who has a steel backbone. Whether it's lawsuits from the unions, attacks from the media, 
or others, Governor Ron DeSantis has remained steadfast in leading with conviction. DeSantis's education policies have often been criticized by teacher unions, including the National Education Association and the American Federation of Teachers, the two groups who the Freedom Foundation is ultimately targeting by going after UTD. Teachers' unions are not about the teacher. You all know that. They have gotten into these social cultural wars, pushing this toxic material down into our children. Despite what you see in the news, together it will make a difference across the country. We will continue to fight. We are winning the fight. Whether we like it or not, education is a new battlefield. And all of you are the soldiers. Diaz's speech was secretly recorded at the summit by this man. Well, my name is John Rokes. I'm a teacher. Um, I started driving a school bus in this system. From there, I became a security monitor at the schools. From there, I continued going to school, and I became a teacher. And I am now a teacher uh, for autistic children. I call Reef Elementary School. Rokas admits he attended the conference to spy on the group on behalf of UTD. Because I'm not going to let them destroy this union. This, this union is already established. In their most recent contract, UTD negotiated pay raises for teachers between 7 and 10 percent. That contract was ratified this year with 91 percent of district employees voting for it. The union also ran the campaign in Miami-Dade County to increase the sales tax by a penny in 2018 and 2022, raising millions of dollars to increase teacher pay. In addition to the teacher summit in July, Rokas has also attended several organizational meetings in Miami where he said he met Rusty Brown. What was your understanding of what the Freedom Foundation is trying to do? Destroy the unions. That's what I understood. You know, they didn't want unions. They just did not want unions. That was a no-no. Hertel Fernandez said what is happening in Florida and across the country does have serious consequences. When these laws that weaken unions, especially public sector labor unions, go into effect, it becomes harder for Democrats, especially Democrats representing working class interests, to get elected and to hold office and to pass legislation. So um, whether or not you're a member of a union, um, if you have an interest in the broader political terrain of a state or of the country, this has big consequences for you. I reached out to Manny Diaz in the Florida Department of Education I wanted to know who paid for Manny Diaz's trip to the resort in Colorado. How long was he there? Who else was with him? And if he was paid for being the keynote speaker? But they have not responded to my questions. I also contacted State Senator Blaise Ngalia, who sponsored Senate Bill 256, to see if he wanted to respond to the claim that Rusty Brown and the Freedom Foundation actually wrote the bill he sponsored. But again, I'm still waiting to hear back. Nevertheless, after we first broke the story about the Freedom Foundation on Thursday night, we have heard from a number of people. State Senator Chevron Jones issued this statement after watching our story. This report highlights something that we've known for a long time. The governor and Republicans want to dismantle unions at the expense of teachers and schools. While this may be a national effort, they've already infiltrated our state. Florida showed its hand already last session by passing bills that attack our constitutional right to unionize. Now they're just being blatant. They should be ashamed of themselves. This is none other than a power grab from right-wing elected officials who are too busy going after woke instead of making our system work. Now we also heard from UTD President Carl Hernandez Matz, who issued a statement on Friday that read in part, the Freedom Foundation's crusade to dismantle labor organizations and strip teachers of their fundamental rights has made its way to our classroom doors. This orchestrated assault by a billionaire-funded right-wing fringe group is now threatening the economic security and rights of educators in Miami-Dade. The tactics employed by the Freedom Foundation in Florida are consistent with their nationwide playbook. Launch misinformation campaigns, create legal challenges, and spew divisive rhetoric, their actions attack and attempt to dismantle the collaborative spirit that has historically defined the labor movement. Now, I think it's important to remember that Carl Hernandez Matz ran last year with Charlie Crist against Ron DeSantis. And according to John Rokas, it was one of the things that kept getting brought up with his meetings with the Freedom Foundation. 
Did they talk about Carla specifically? Oh, yeah. Carla specifically. Uh, in Denver or? or he in Denver and here in the groups that we sat in. Do you think the fact that Carla ran as Charlie Crist, Lieutenant Governor, put a target on her? That's the main gripe. Yes, absolutely. Everybody Did they talk about that? They talk about that. Now, this is a major story that has a lot of components to it that we will be following in the weeks ahead.